Welcome back, Miguel Gomez. Thank you. So um, here we are, six and a half hours later. Um, for a, a film that is so full of interruptions, cliffhangers, endings, and new beginnings, and I was wondering if it was uh, difficult for you to figure out how, how to end part three, and, and why did you decide on that final shot? No, because I thought this, this uh, Sherazade woman she would guess in the end that uh, that she could be capable of end this film knowing something uh, that I'm not sure she knows in the beginning, which is that uh, that stories they are carried by people, and so uh, even in the least apparently possible plays in some uh, with some working classes wor working class guys uh, that have uh, apparently they don't know anything about genies and uh, and flying carpets and things like this that it's possible to show them and and they will trans they will have stories uh, to tell and uh, you have to trust people uh, that because people have always something to say it's a question of time but uh, you'll get the stories can you talk a bit about um the the bird trappers um how you discover them the process of, of uh, shooting that section, which ends up being, I think, the, the longest one in any of the three volumes. Yeah, this was like an obsession because uh, all the stories we have shot, they, uh, we thought of, uh, about them or they appeared because of the journalists or, and uh, in every one it was different how we worked in these stories but it was always we had like one week to shoot them or two weeks maximum maybe and this story of the it's i don't know if if it's a story it's not like something that has this dramaturgical it doesn't have a plot like like uh, maybe like uh, it's uh, the convention but uh, it was something when we found out I think it started to be something we have seen in, in the YouTube. Uh, these guys in the previous contest, like in this place near the airport where there are these huge planes landing, and you have this image in YouTube of these guys that look that they are like uh, extras in a Martin Scorsese film in the 70s or something. So very tough guys completely silent drinking beer in silence and w hearing birds singing in a <laughs> surrounded by planes that were landing and i said when i was uh, i think when I, i've seen this uh, you youtube um, thing uh, i was like i start to cry because i said Okay, if this is not Arabian Nights, I don't know what is Arabian Nights. And so, for us, uh, w w we entered this world, and this world was completely secret and unknown, unknown for us. It's like a parallel society in, in Portugal. And, uh, and we had the sensation, filming these guys, we started to shoot, I think it was in... Uh, uh, October or November 2013 and the last uh, thing we have shot it was the contest and the contest is in spring so I guess it was like April 2014 and so we were shooting the other stories but we came back to this one shooting one more day one more day one more day 
for uh, six months, I guess, <coughs> or more. And uh, because we had the feeling that in, into the, this whole process, in the, in this whole film, we were, like I said to you before, in the, other, the previous day, we are trying to have space, to invent some space for the things that happen, really happen in the world, in, the, in Portugal, so the material world. And we had this huge opportunity to film these working class uh, guys in these neighborhoods that no one uh, cares or they, they talk about these neighborhoods in television only because of uh, social problems or you know, uh, drug, drug uh, traffic uh, and things like this. And we had the opportunity to film these guys and to film and to tell a little bit about the lives of these guys. And at the same moment, they w we just planted the camera in, f in front of them and they were doing the most surreal, uh, completely surreal thing. So I had the sensation of filming two worlds at the same time, filming a very direct uh, document about these neighborhoods and these uh, guys. And at the same time, you know, these guys, you know, inventing uh, bird songs in the computer for the birds to learn and doing these contests in the, where, in the, in the, almost uh, in the middle of the, the Lisbon airport with the planes coming up and down. It was like uh, filming two, world, two worlds at the same time. I had this uh, sensation. And so for us, it, uh, it, it was like uh, we have to put, uh, we put all the money in this one because uh, for us it was uh, very special. And the decision to use um, so many titles instead of voiceover um, to rely on text, was that because of the, the bird song and wanting that to dominate the soundtrack? Yeah, you get to hear lots of uh, these, uh, these birds, they sing very loud, no? So, and, uh, and they, they do it uh, during the whole film. And so we wanted to have that all the time. But uh, we tried the voiceover of Shahrazad in the beginning, the, of course, Sharazad is playing in the film, so uh, there is no voice over. And we tried this with the, with the text. And then we said, okay, let's do this film about two communities, one completely fake that never existed, that looks completely unreal, with characters so strange like uh, Paddleman and... Uh, it's not the kind of characters you connect with uh, Arabian Nights normally. And then a second community with, uh, uh, with these guys that are doing uh, something, the, their hobby. It's so strange, like in a Ar Arabian Nights tale. Um, and so let's give the same treatment to uh, these two parts. And this, that meant using the text. It's the last volume, so we are more close to the form of a book, the book, Arabian Nights. So I wanted to have text. But first we tried with uh, uh, coming back with, uh, with, with a voice uh, uh, over, a traditional voice over like we have before. And it was stealing something in the sound. And we said, let's steal that to the image. And let's invent what I've told you in the beginning, like this silent voiceover. And this film can be like a graphic novel, you know? Like the Marvel, uh, Marvel Comics uh, superhero books. And so, take an, a, a little bit like childhood books too. Like an encyclopedia of two communities, one that never existed and one that exists in Lisbon. And they are very, very far away. And at the same time, they have things in common. Because I think that uh, what the people 
do in Baghdad, in this uh, very strange Baghdad, very psychedelic Baghdad that you see in the film, it's not so different from what you get with the bird trappers. They, they, they are doing this, uh, this thing in a parallel world and so many people then ask me, I don't know if I'm still in questions, I'm sorry if I'm doing that uh, for, from you, but some people ask me what these guys, what they are doing is good or bad. I mean, they don't seem to, they, th they seem that they don't live in such good conditions. So they, they are poor, uh, they were born in slum uh, houses, neighborhoods, and they are not very politically active. So they are not doing nothing for themselves. And that's a shame. And uh, I say, yeah, yeah, I agree. And there are other people that says, that says uh, no, but what they are doing is incredible because it's so such a parallel universe. I mean, this kind of poetic idea of uh, uh, working with birds and uh, and have them to sing, uh, try them to to to, to they try uh, to have the birds to sing the way they want, and it's like a a world with so many rules, and it's like a parallel world, and so this is kind of. Uh, of uh, another world, so it defies the world we are all living in. So this is, in a way, kind of a crazy political uh, alternative world. And I say, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. So I agree with both. And um, I think that sometimes uh, things are something and they're opposite. And I think it, it happens in this one. This is why I like this one. Okay. Uh, we'll take questions from the audience. Yep. I'll just repeat a question about the, the importance uh, of music in your films and your connection to music. That's a very easy question to answer. I love music. So I w w in the film, we have the opportunity to 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 put music and uh, in this case I knew I had such a big film that I could use music in many different ways. I don't know how many versions uh, in the three vo volumes exist of Perfidia. I've chosen Perfidia uh, because of the actress. She wanted to sing Perfidia. I've uh, uh, ask her what you want to sing. I've shown to her some songs and then she was very glad with Perfidia and I thought it was very good because I could, uh, you know, I could have uh, lots of versions because it's a very well-known song. It's like a uh, Latin American standard and so w we could use the Nat King Cole version and, uh, you know, the Glenn Miller orchestra version and the reggae ska version and uh, Los Panchos Mexican uh, version and uh, Charizard version. So, and this was good because it, with the three films, I think that there are some elements that come back all the time. But as the film keeps uh, changing, you can recognize this uh, uh, element, and but then is is it changed? It's a different. Now you see it in a different uh, perspective. It's uh, it's a different thing, and so for instance with Perfidia, we were very glad to use many versions of the same song that were comp uh, changing all the time. But you could recognize the melody, but it was different uh, every time.
No, that that we we stole from the from the book. The book is uh, Arabian Nights has always this uh, this thing. It's like you know, it's like a, a oh, how do you say it in English? I don't know the uh, refrain. The how do you say it? The in the the part of the song that you recognize R refrain. So it's a little bit like the refrain of uh, the book. You have this st structure, and you have always these sentences that about when she starts, she continues to to tell the story. When she uh, finish and interrupts uh, interrupts the story. But uh, I guess that uh, the use of the text uh, was because when I I tried with the voiceover like. Uh, uh, I did in the other volumes. I thought th this was an intrusion, and even if there are some people, and I, I can understand that they think it's an intrusion because it steals too much spice, spice to the image. Uh, for me, it was an intrusion. To the intrusion was more in the sound than in the image, and so it's as I told you. For me, I can compare it to a graphic novel in the sense you have images and that's the the occupies more space and you have these blocks of text that uh, are appearing and I, I think I thought that in this case in general because of the what's this inside the story and outside the story I thought this this uh, volume is a little bit like an encyclopedia. And so in an encyclopedia you have like a, a description of uh, something and this was an encyclopedia of uh, a community, two communities, one the Baghdad one and the Lisbon one, the bird trappers one. And uh, I really, the, in the beginning I, I thought that this volume was not, would not be called the enchanted one but uh, it would be called Volume 3 uh, of, uh, of, uh, how do you say? of memory, or about memory. Uh, and so this has always, uh, when I understood that I could have something so opposite as the part of Baghdad and the part of the, in Lisbon, and that even then we could have a connection. Uh, I thought that we should have an element very uh, strong, like because it's not so usual, usual to have uh, so many texts in a film in the in over the image of a film, and to use the same the same dispositive in one part and the other to do this kind of encyclopedia or children's book. Maybe I like more, even more that uh, idea, telling something about all these uh, char characters that Sharazad is, is uh, meeting in Baghdad and also stories about this group of guys in Lisbon that take care of these birds and uh, do these uh, bird song contests. Oh, could you anybody complain about being filmed? Well, I have a rule, which I, I think it's uh, important, which is uh, we'll, we should, and people that are uh, in the film, they agree to appear in the film. If they don't agree, I don't shoot. So they cannot complain. I mean, they agreed. Uh, and then they they went to see the film, uh, and they said, uh, "But I've done more things. Why it, it's not in the film?" And I said, "Because there's something called editing, so I could not put everything on the film." But, but no, but uh, no one complained about uh, that. All right, we can take one final question. If there's any, yeah, at the back.
Yeah, what what was uh, exciting for us was that with every segment of the film we had to change the the rules. So I think there there was not uh, like a uh, uniform thing like a a way to proceed. It was always different uh, in every moment. Of course to film these uh, guys the bird trappers it was one thing to do the uh, the the part with Sherazad it was another so every time we had different rules and uh, it depended on uh, what we were trying to have and uh, who were going to film and try to adapt to this uh, kind of universe they could give to us so uh, but uh, I work with two screenwriters. Uh, one of them is also editor of the film. We have also the other screenwriter. Uh, she's uh, attending to the editing too, because normally we write the voice over or the, the text in, the, in this case during the editing. So we edit and we write at the same time. Normally, you write in the beginning, you shoot, and then you edit. And me, I don't do that. Uh, uh, sometimes, only in the end, I start to write the film. It's quite, it's a little bit uh, strange, but it's like this, and the people allow me to do this. And uh, I want to continue if they continue to <laughs> allow me to do this. But it's always different. But for me, it's very important to have other people uh, because uh, I have this tendency. I, I, I don't want to get very psychological, but uh, I, have, I think I have this tendency to invent uh, like a parallel world. And, um, and so it's good to, to work with other people and not... Uh, and <laughs> For them to tell, oh, okay, you're uh, being too, too strange, <laughs> or I'm joking. I think, I think, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, no, it's important to have someone to tell you, okay, this idea it's very good, but here, here, and here, it's it's uh, bullshit. It's nonsense, and so. Uh, and we work like this. It's it's uh, important to have someone. It's so it it always uh, departures from from me. It's me that have the idea, and start. To sometimes I can tell the whole script, and they are typing the other two. They are typing, and I say, okay, dialogue, dialogue, scene uh, three, interior, uh, and I do this for like for two hours and I get to the end of the script, and then they say to me, that's really stupid. I say, what are the parts that are, are stupid? And sometimes they say all of them, and if, uh, 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 if they say all of them, I, I, I know that uh, I spent two hours for nothing. Uh, if they say, no, this part and this part, there, there was one part good. I say, okay. We are starting to have something. And so sometimes it's very quick. Sometimes, incredibly, they say, it's all good. Leave it like that. And then I, I, I think, uh, I say to them, I don't trust you. <laughs> now let's, let's rediscuss this tomorrow. And s other moments they say, no, it's all bad. Some, normally they say, it's good, but we have problems here and here. And then they bring their own ideas because I say, okay, so try to do better than me. And they do. And sometimes I say, okay, it's, yeah, it, it, I don't know if it's better, but, but I'll film it because I'm, I'm, I'm working with you and I love you. <laughs> and I think everyone should be a part of this film. But they know that I, I mean, yeah, it's much better than I thought. Uh, uh, I know. I know that they 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 understand that this, this thing. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like this, but it's always different because 
every day is a different day and every day we are different in i mean not so different uh, or else we are like very disturbed uh, people but a little bit different and so you know some days we are a little bit more melancholical sometimes we are uh, in a very good mood and uh, and the film is also about that about uh, about what we can do during the time we are doing the film because sometimes the film uh, there is like something that uh, we are supposed to do a structure and to write a script and everything should be defined from the start and uh, it's not fair it's not fair because when we are doing a film i think we should not uh, make like an intermission from our life so we should make uh, more uh, uh, happy films when we are more happy or sad films when we are sad and everything this is is cool we should not uh, uh, stop our life and uh, because we are making a film we should uh, put some of that uh, into the film all right um so miguel i want to thank you for these incredible films and for being here with us all week it's been very special and very i want meaningful. to thank you and to thank you for being here. Thank you. Thanks Thank you very much.